Hello, hello. Buenas, Javier. ¿Qué onda? Hello, everyone. I'm just finishing uh, setting up everything and then um, checking that all the channels are working. And then we'll start very soon. So Alright, so, hello everyone, seems everything seems to be working fine. Okay, let's go. So, today's stream is, is going to be interesting. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the Zebra's live broadcast this uh, this week but or like this month but we're trying to do something um, okay I'll correct that we're trying to do something a bit uh, interesting like a like a challenge type of thing and the idea is to basically just um, sculpt something from a from a volume from a predetermined volume like a sphere or a cube and to mostly just stay within the boundaries of that um, cube or like any other um, shape we're gonna use. Hey Martin, yeah, um, I just started like two minutes ago. Um, so the, the rules for this challenge is like to take a volume and sculpt something from it and stay within the boundaries of that volume. Um, I've decided Okay, the original challenge was uh, was supposed to be only with uh, subtractive sculpting, but um, basically, like additive sculpting is also allowed. Like we are also allowed to, to just add volume, but to stay within the boundaries. Um, I decided not only to do it harder for myself. Um, I'm only gonna do subtractive sculpting here, but not only that, I'm gonna only use one brush for the whole two-hour stream. I'm only going to be using clay build up. I'm not going to be using move. I'm not going to be using smooth. I'm not going to be using control Z. Um, and so this is going to be fun. I've already painted the reference here in the cube. It's really easy. We can just turn it on and off here. Um, and I, I didn't really care for it to be like exactly a line. It's just like a general reference and so it should be interesting so okay let's let's start and first okay since we're only going to be using one brush and there's not going to be control c's allowed for me like a self uh, a self uh, restriction i guess i'm going to be working pretty slow so Basically, we need to visualize a lot and only execute when ready. So I'm, I'm going to start by taking the volume off of the back and I'm going to be working with, uh, with Dynamish. I'm going to be using a, a Sculptures Pro because that, like, I, I tend to change the size of the brush a lot and that affects the resolution. So I'm just going to be like remeshing constantly. And okay, only exception, I'm going to be just, I'm going to paint this, this white. I don't count this as part of the process, just so it's less, less visually, um, like less visual noise, I guess. And after this, we continue with just one brush. Why don't I use the clip brush to block out the form? Because I'm gonna be only using uh, clay build up. I'm gonna like. Okay, so it's 
I have very few, um, not a lot of experience uh, with traditional sculpting. I, I should say, like my my digital to to traditional sculpting ratio is it's way more towards digital. But I've sculpted a few a few things in traditional, and I did a a pumpkin for Halloween two years ago, and that was pretty intense in the sense of like I wasn't used to just taking out volume and not being able to add volume. So that that experience was really interesting and I want to kind of replicate that experience here in digital. So yeah, no clips, no masks, no smooth, no control C. Just good old clay build up. And uh, it's probably going to be ugly as hell, but I hope it's fun. So I'm going to be starting with the easiest part, which is like all this volume here. Doesn't exist. It's kind of tricky because, okay, so I have my references here in the, in the other screen um, of a lot of skulls from different angles because it's going to be actually really difficult to just stay with these two, um, to these two views. I don't want the skull to look boxy and, and when you only have like a front view and then a side view, it's really easy to make things look really boxy. And so I have all my refs here and wish me luck. I can take a lot of volume off of the sides, but I, I kind of want to like get the shape on the side first. Now I'm going to be... Um, I should take the alpha off. I'm going to be remeshing constantly, so I don't lose... Uh, because like when when you okay, let me show you Like it's really very grid like and so when I When I start uh, working on the shapes, I'm gonna be needing to uh, Remesh constantly Hey everyone hello to everyone that's uh, just arriving Yeah, hey, I don't know if it's a great uh, practice method but it's uh, maybe it, it, it certainly makes me um, much more conscious of, of every stroke I'm really used to working with this brush like I really love clay build up it's like 85% of my work is with this thing um, it's just that I'm really loose with it I'm, I'm really used to working very very fast and very loose with this thing because i like to add and subtract all the time so it's gonna be interesting um i modified the clay build up this is the it's like a custom version that i use normally the clay build up is um comes with a with a square alpha I like to use a, a circle alpha, so the um, the effect on the surface isn't as intense. No, 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 Martin. I I have never. Okay, I don't come from traditional sculpting. My my background is is pretty much all digital. But I've done a few things here and there, like a couple of school projects, a couple of sculptures, um, just like as a hobby. And then I carved a pumpkin and that's it. That's my only experience with, uh, with traditional sculpting. I sure need to, uh, to practice that much more, I guess. 
yeah, orthographic views is just not enough. Fortunately, like fortunately, I'm pretty familiar with the skulls in general. I've sculpted many skulls already, so I kind of know how it works. Or at least I hope I do. And at one point the, the reference is gonna start to like deform a lot, so it's it's only gonna be useful in the beginning. But once we maybe it's easier if I turn off the polypaint. Because we can see the shape. So we need to be really careful because I'm not adding anything. So just subtracting. So like if I if I mess up as a as a rule for myself, I'm just gonna be able I'm I'm, I'm gonna need to um, figure out a way to uh, fix the mistake. So we'll see how it goes. Fortunately, there's like a lot of uh, space here in the sides or at the sides, so like it, it's kind of tricky because like when I look it from the side, it it sort of looks like it's right there, but when I when I turn it, like we can see there's like all of this space that we're gonna need to carve out eventually. Why well, am I using a cube instead of a spear? I don't know. Um, I guess, I don't know, I didn't really think about that. Um, but I guess it's, uh, I'm gonna guess that the old masters didn't have a lot of spheres, of marble spheres lying around. And they worked off of blocks. I'm gonna guess. So we need to start carving the sides slowly. Okay, all all this volume needs to go. So that's what I said like it's it's going to be tricky. One tip um, when you're working with reference is not to get to um, not to be like too precise with the reference, unless it's like a blueprint or something. Most most references are just like a guideline, like a suggestion or like a um, target. In the end, what really matters is that you make it work in 3D. That's the most important thing. If it, if it works in 3D, you're good. Yeah, yeah, the planes do help because I found this reference online and I, I think it would have been harder to um, to map it just on uh, on a sphere, I guess. From what I understand, like old sculptures did a lot of studies. Like they started with sketches first, and then they did like maquettes with clay. Like. If you only have like one giant block of marble, you don't, you can't waste it. So you need to be exactly certain that whatever it is you're doing is, is correct. So you need to do a lot of trial runs. And also for painters, like I think a lot of um, old painters used to do like maquettes and lighting studies and sketches and 
it's just for one painting like the process was much much lower So we can start seeing the shape slowly forming. I still need to take a lot of volume off of here, so. What pen tablet do I use? Uh, Wacom Intuos 3. I think this came out in like 2009 or something. It's still alive and kicking. That's what I use all day, every day. So it's gonna look like like crap for the first hour or so and then and then comes the fun. So with this thing, it's really important to visualize the, the skull inside. Like imagine that the skull is buried in inside the, the cube. And we're just like uh, unearthing it, kind of. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot of time. Um, hopefully I can reach uh, something interesting by the two hour mark. So we can starting we can we can start to see that the that the shape is beginning to um, to be the form like the because of the okay so like the poly paint that i did on the side it's starting to deform because of the carving that i'm doing so at one point this reference is not going to be useful anymore and so i need to um use it as much as i can right now carving I need to do here. So right now that the um, the original reference is starting to kind of feel weird, I'm gonna start some freestyling. Yeah, there's a lot of, of like lateral space. I need to carve more here and then like when I look from the top, all this needs to go.
I'm just gonna carve here a little bit. This might not be the correct position, but I, I wanna know where the where the main features are. Like this, so I can I can guide myself better. I knew this was gonna be hard, but I kinda I didn't think it was gonna be that hard. It's really I think I'm gonna need a lot of patience for this. If I look from the top, this is very plain. So I also need to start working on this view. really slowly carving out this area take a lot of volume from here Um, yeah, maybe, but since I don't, okay, though, the thing is, I'm not only doing subtractive sculpting, I'm also doing no control C, so every stroke is important. I'm only taking, I'm not gonna, like, I, I, I've, I feel like it's, you don't really imagine what it's like to only subtract until you only do it. So every mistake that I, that I do is going to stay there. And that's a no bueno. Let's take a lot from the side. Oops, that was a mistake. My bad. Wasn't intentional. That's the only... Um, because since I'm only doing uh, subtractive, I changed the, um, the brush to be only uh, Z-Sub and I accidentally press Alt, so... Just a tiny mistake, but... We keep going. This is way harder than I thought. Oh, 
Oh, somehow I lost the color. I don't know what happened. Oh no, okay. Anyways, we move forward. It's just a skull. But it's tricky. It's kind of tricky. Also no smooth, so... I need to get the shapes right just with carving. How am I doing this to myself? I'm going to take a bunch of volume off of this area to start looking better at the shape. Okay, I need to be careful not to uh, suddenly go too deep and then not being able to fix it. Remember, I'm only doing subtractive, so any volume that is like protruding, I need to figure out a way to make it look like it's it's like additive volume, but with a subtractive brush. What do you mean, Martin? I think um, more like not being able to smooth anything is actually less like more frustrating than uh, than not using Control C. I can I can leave uh, without control C but like not being able to smooth some things I'm so used to it So this part here, like the, the front of the teeth, is the frontmost part of the sculpt. So this is going to guide me to the rest of the face. Like for example, we can see like the, the, the brow ridge and the nose are already defined, but they're going to be like way back, like maybe around here. So I need to slowly, slowly, slowly carve the volume. When you're when you're sculpting something it's really important to look as with as many angles as possible. You want to take full advantage of um the medium that you can rotate uh, things like super easily. 
if you only stick with like traditional like side view and front view you're gonna be losing a lot of perspective so i i don't recommend to just work on ortho actually like try and try and maybe like sculpt like a difficult angle like this one like figure out what parts of the sculpt make sense what parts don't right now my brush is really big but eventually i'm gonna be sculpting much closer and with a smaller brush For extra difficulty, I guess, um, I could have done just like without symmetry, but no, <laughs> that would have been too much. I guess so, yeah, I guess I could block out like monsters from this, that's true. Adjusting intensity to mimic material type and weight? Uh, nah. No, I don't think so. Well, I... Mm, no, I don't think so. It's gonna be really hard to replicate the... the feel of real clay with just digital. But the thing is, uh, I think it comes down to how precise you are with your hands. Well, because with ZBrush you have a lot of uh, possibilities and then like there's a lot of, of people that have done like uh, digital sculpts that look like clay by using some brushes and alphas and things like that. and. I feel like it really doesn't matter how you feel the material in digital. It, I think it's instead more important to uh, to be precise with the hands and be able to control the movement and do exactly what it that what is you want to do. So we're starting to be to get adventures with this part here. Um, and I still need to have the nose be a bit further back. So like the cheekbones, if we see the side view, uh, I don't know why I lost the, in, in what moment, maybe like with the Dynamesh, I didn't transfer the, the poly paint. <laughs> no going back right now. Um, but so the cheekbones aren't exactly parallel with the nose. Like if we see here, the this, this face is still really square. And my, objective right now is to make it more um not curved but i don't know i don't know what the adjective i'm looking for is i guess less squared less squared so the cheekbones are around here which means i still need to take more volume off the eyebrows and the eyes. So I keep pushing the, the eye, like the eye sockets further and further deep at the same time that I'm pushing all the volumes around as well.
Yeah, next time for the no symmetry. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah, uh, maybe... So... Knight, I think that might be like a personal preference. Me, personally, I don't like to change the settings of the brushes that much. I do for some things. Um, but it's more specific stuff. And I prefer to uh, to have precision. Like I think with with just clay build up, move smooth, standard, and like a, a cut brush, like a like a damp standard or slash or um, cracks or something like that, you can pretty much sculpt anything. Pretty much. This is really hard. This is way harder than I thought. Or maybe I'm just being impatient because at this stage, I feel like I I would have been already able to have something that resembles a skull. Um, yeah, I think that's it. That like it's just maybe the workflow. I'm not used to it. Looking all right. So just, just to visualize what's going on, I'm going to go back. Okay, first I'm going to save, because I don't want to lose anything. So if we go back to the beginning, I'm going to try and, and move the slider to show you. Yeah, no one does. Has it ever happened to you that you're drawing and then your hand instinctively goes to the control Z position? I have, I've had it happen to me a couple of times where I'm like drawing something and then I, I just like tap the table like, oh, control Z. And I'm like, oh, damn, I can't do that. Okay, so this is what I started with. And we can see, I hope if it's not too slow. Uh, it's really slow. So we've just been carving stuff. Slowly finding, slowly unearthing the skull within. Feels like it's shrinking now that I look at it. Okay, so this is what I have. Uh, 
I kind of want to, it's really important, like, when we see a skull from the side, the face isn't completely um, on the vertical plane. Like, it's it's a little bit, if, you, if I see from the side, like, the face, it's like the forehead, it's a little bit behind the teeth, if we have the skull perfectly aligned, so... Carving. And once we have the main shapes, it's 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 easier because now we can see the skull. Uh, like now, now we can imagine or visualize the volumes, and it's easier to see what's working and what isn't working. I'm trying to send the, um, I forget the, the word in English, but like this part of the eye socket further back. Like, <laughs> this is a, way, a good way to understand forms. So if you sculpt a block out of many forms, I can sculpt each one individually, more accurately, typically with muscles. Oh, it's okay, you're not spamming. This is what chat is for. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then once you're used to how the volumes work, you can start breaking the rules, creating them in different ways. Still looks pretty bad. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it still looks really bad. Um, it still doesn't look like a proper sculpt. Uh, skull, I, I'm sorry. Is there a reference I'm using? Yeah, I'm using a lot of references here. That's what I'm looking at right now. The thing is my, my two monitors are really far apart, so I have to turn my head around a lot. Thank you, Jimmy. So the teeth have this curvature that I'm trying to get and that will help me guide where the jaw bone is, which I still need to take more volume from here. So the top of the head still looks pretty flat. I'm 
gonna carve a bit here. Control C is hard. Um, sure, I'll, I'll have this open and I'm gonna look for it when I'm, I'm done. No worries. So it's starting to look much better. Um, I have a little bit of the curvature that I was talking about. I still want to carve a bit, bit more volume here, just a little bit, and then. Having out the volume here on the side of the head. Um, it's the challenge that all uh, Seabridge live streamers are, um, we're trying to do is uh, subtractive sculpting only. And then I went a step further and then decided that I'm, I'm not going to use either Control C or any other brush that it's not labeled <laughs> because I hate life. So I had an image from the bottom of a skull, but I can find it. I guess I didn't. Let me just search for the reference super quick. Of course, it's not going to be like super precise. It's it's made like because there's holes and stuff like that on a on a real skull. I'm just um, going for like a the main, main shapes.
Uh, what's the difference between the free mini version and the paid one? Uh, I think... Okay, so there's... I think there's three versions of ZBrush. There's like the, the main main version, which is this one. And then last time, uh, we also did a challenge that was supposed to be only on ZBrush Core Mini. And that's another version, which is free. But it's very bare bones. It's like a, it's like a phone app. Which is like eight brushes and three features, and that's it. Like and it's literally just like that. I'm not kidding. And then there's ZBrush Core, which is paid. It's really cheap, but it's paid. And I think that's like a like a mini ZBrush. It, it's it's not so watered down as the ZBrush Core Mini. It's just like a I want to say fundamental version of ZBrush in the sense that. It has most of the stuff that you need for the base, for like to start something. Uh, that's what I mean with fundamental. And, um, so there's the full version of ZBrush, then there's ZBrush Core, which is cheaper and has um, way less things, it's like for a ZBrush for beginners, sort of. And then there's like ZBrush Core Mini, which is like an app, like really, really bare bones. And that one is free. Sorry if I'm not reading the chat that much today, but I'm trying to... It's really hard to get the shapes with just subtracting. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, no worries, Jimmy. Yeah, ZBrush Core, it's... Uh, it's really useful if, you, if you're starting. So the planes on the jawbone are f like flatter. I'm gonna try and get them right. It's getting there, it's getting there. Uh, no, I haven't. I've tried Cintiqs though, and I like them quite a lot. I want to get one, um, but like notebooks and, and laptops and stuff like that would surface. No, no, I haven't. I need to send the cheekbones way back. So let's go. What tablet you use it really doesn't matter for ZBrush. It's um, it's a very easy program to use with almost anything. It's really light.
So finally it's starting to look like something. I need to remember not to go too deep uh, with this sort of carvings because I can't go back either with Ctrl C or with additive volume. So I'm only taking away. I already put the brush in subtract mode and that's the only thing. I'm practically just rotating the camera and carving. I still, I still don't know how I'm gonna do the teeth. Um, I guess I could try, oh man, I don't want to, I don't want to screw it up. I guess I could try like just a small, a very small brush size. So now if I look from the top, it looks pretty good. This was uh, pretty tricky to do. I think the trickiest part was getting the width of the head correctly. Because since we started from a cube, the head from the front is much thinner than from the side. And it was tricky to get the proportions right. have a lot of references from many angles. So the back, I, I, I messed up here. I didn't say anything, but I messed up here. This, I shouldn't have carved so much volume here, but whatever. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. It just looks like, I mean, it should have a bit more volume here. That's all. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but I feel like if I tried to correct for that, I, I'm going to need to like shrink the whole thing and it's going to, it's going to be a pain. So I'm gonna try with a smaller brush and a higher intensity to start carving the teeth. I just need, okay, I don't have control C or additive. So I need to be really careful with the placement of the teeth if I don't want it. I don't want to screw it up. Am I doing this to myself? For the teeth, I probably need a, like a higher resolution. Actually, it's probably not gonna be enough with this one. It looks like a—I don't know. It kind of looks like a demon, which wasn't 
intentional. Try and round this part a little bit. And then there's a hole in the jaw, like there's a jawbone. Uh, maybe I need to carve a bit more from the, yeah, it's too far back, too far back. So right now it's easier to just like take a, a chunk because I already know where the main volumes are like before I didn't want to do like big big gestures um, in case I made a mistake and then I couldn't go back ¿Qué onda Marquito? ¿Cómo andas? Three spooky five you. Okay, that was a glitch. You know how sometimes Zebras does that? That doesn't count. I'm using a control C for that. Yesterday I was teasing Ashley for, for doing the same thing. Like she had a couple of glitches and said exactly the same thing. But yeah, no, it's uh I think it's it's valid. So the jaw has this it has like two insertion points, one here and one here, and then it has like this slide with the volume, and I'm gonna try and get that showing up here. A little bit. No, I have a bunch of references here on the other screen. I know, like, I, I've sculpted a lot of skulls and heads and, and things like that, and I sort of know. I mean, I don't want to know. I don't want to say I already know the face, like, perfectly, because I think there's always new things to learn. But I'm pretty familiar with the main shapes. So uh, that helps. But no, I have I have reference here. Because there's, there's always something that you don't remember exactly or... Um, that has like a, a particular shape. I think this needed to be higher. think so I mean it, it's so hard to resist the the urge to smooth hello hey Brian when you're when you're doing things for yourself I think it's it's really good to not rely on on reference too much um, I think reference can sometimes be a bit restrictive in, well, it, I think it depends. Um, what I'm trying to say is, I guess, first learn the rules and then break them. But you gotta learn the rules first. Why no smoothing? Because I hate life. So there's, I don't know if you guys see, uh, I put the rules here on the, on the stream on top of the webcam. It's only clay build up and only subtracting. I started from a cube and this is what we got so far. We sort of have permission to use additive as long as we stay inside the 
the original volume, but I said nope. sockets are actually really big I don't know no name I honestly don't know Uh, it's I have this tablet for so long that I I haven't messed with the settings in a long time. Like what I would recommend if you care about that stuff is just just start with something. Like if you get a new, if you got a new tablet, just start sculpting. And if you feel like it's too much, lower it. If you feel like it's too little, increase it. This part doesn't really matter that much. Um, it still kind of looks like a, a very thick jaw. So I'm gonna try and carve a little bit more. Yeah, I'm sorry. I I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, a tablet isn't really that important. Like, look at this. This is the thing that I'm using right now. I get I get asked uh, what tablet I'm using every single stream. I have I've had this thing for like 11 years. I don't know if you can see how worn out the surface is. But it still works fantastic, so why not keep using it? I feel like sometimes um, people place too much importance on on like tools. They are important, but they are not the most important thing, I would say. Of course, it's not the same to sculpt on uh, one of these tablets, then on a bamboo tablet, then on a Cintiq. It's gonna change like the, the precision, sensitiv sensitivity, um, the feel of the surface, like many things are different. But having one or the other isn't gonna be, isn't gonna like create the, the artwork for you. And I, I, I'm guessing, like, if you gave, I don't know, someone like Rafael Grassetti, um, like, a bamboo tablet, he's going to sculpt pretty much the same thing. Um, no, when, like, on a mouse, uh, that's the only exception, I would say. You can, you can try, like, okay, hard mode, like, legendary mode. Subtractive sculpting, just one brush on a mouse. That's like the ultimate test. That that would be the only exception. Um, mice aren't really good for ZBrush, I would say. You can move stuff around. You can, of course, click the, the buttons on the interface, but good luck trying to get 
fine detail or like um what's the word i'm looking for like nuanced shapes with just the mouse it's gonna be really tricky so this is looking pretty good the jaw still feels really thick so that's that's what i've been trying to correct and after that i'm probably gonna remesh with a higher resolution so we can we can do the teeth And it's also really hard to do complex and nuanced shapes with just with just subtracting and not smooth. Oh my god. Like breaks on the on the shape or or like cuts. Things like that. I'm gonna really carve here to show that there's like a hole. Okay, so this looks much better. It, like before it had like a really thick jaw. Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't really know how to pronounce your name, but thank you, I appreciate it, man. Or woman, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, it's hard like, um, it's hard. I'm not gonna deny that it's hard learning ZBrush. Um, the interface is tricky. Getting used to how the software works is tricky. Yeah, the teeth. Okay, so here's the thing. For the teeth, I'm gonna do a remesh. Just finishing this part here real quick okay so I'm gonna do a remesh in a higher resolution and then use the same brush to carve the teeth and see how it goes I, I, I guess I could use sculptress pro for this but I I don't know it's since I'm changing the, the brush size too much or like a lot I feel like that's gonna mess up my my shapes so I'd rather not use Sculptress right now. ¿Qué onda Dario? Así es. Así estoy haciendo el solo esculpido subtractivo, pero además solo estoy usando un solo brush. Y no estoy usando Control Z. A skull without teeth? Yeah, I guess. Mm, no name for more realistic looks. I saw that you first you build a skeleton. Okay, so the way they do it in Hollywood is like that because they have a lot of time and res well maybe not time, but they have a lot of resources, and so since they're looking for the most realistic simulation possible, it helps to have a bone structure underneath and then muscles on top because they give you like. Um, a good reference for volume but if you want to start like stylized i would say do anatomy studies um like actually like try and and replicate the shapes as close as possible to how like just grab a sphere and and marco here in chat he can confirm that because he was my student before but like just grab a sphere and sculpt something out of it and try and get as precise as possible with the with the shapes um, realistically and then 
knowing knowing the rules of how anatomy works is gonna help you break the like the 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 realistic part and, and make like the stylized stuff because if you know how a forearm looks or how a bicep looks or how a shoulder looks it's gonna be way easier to just then break it or stylized or like transform the shapes into something stylized i found that people who just do stylization or cartoon stuff have trouble then doing realistic stuff and i i've seen that people who do realistic stuff are able or capable to just then do stylized i think you need to learn the anatomy first and then break it Okay, I'm gonna do another resolution, uh, another remesh uh, with a higher res, let's say 400. And then we'll go deep on the teeth. should be fun so the front teeth are always a bit further than the back teeth so already trying to carve that and then we have I always forget the names but it's like the, the two front teeth and then there's like a there's two smaller ones and then the canines I feel like for anatomy knowing the names of every single part of the human body isn't as important as knowing the shapes like there's a lot of muscles in the forearm for example that i have no idea what they're called and it doesn't matter i know like i know some of them just like i don't remember i haven't really studied like naming that much uh, I feel like it's easier if you just learn to represent the shapes, you know? So we have the front teeth and then we have the two side teeth and then we have the canines here, which are like here and are a bit higher than the other ones. And then you have the premolars down here. You have like two premolars and then the two. Is that what it's called in English? I'm not even sure. Um, what's the name of that tooth in English? The molars. Is that is that called what it's called? Let me Google that. Yeah, it's the molars. So I'm gonna carve a bit here underneath and then do that the lower teeth but I I, I want to have like it's really it's really evident when you see a skull the front teeth are always further to the front yeah Muller thank you <laughs> my brain is huge uh, what do you mean which brush poly bevel Oh, you're sculpting with a mouse? Yeah. Yeah, if you can get a tablet. Uh, I'm using clay build up with a with a circle alpha instead of the square one. 
This is the alpha that comes with the brush. But if you look at it, like it, it leaves a much different trace because of the alpha. So that's why I'm using the circle one. You continue. So you have the two premolars and then the two molars here. And then in the front, so the teeth are smaller in the front. This looks horrible. I'm gonna need to fix that, okay. Second try. Here's like the lower molars. Incisor canine, premolar, and molar. Yes. Any anatomy bone muscle pack for ZBrush? Uh, uh, Grassetti, Rafael Grassetti has like a, an ecorche on his gum road that you can buy. It's like a, it's a C tool um, which comes with like a full skeleton and all the muscles. It's really great for uh, studying. So I'm not going to be able to replicate the full experience of having the holes on the skull. But this is going to be, it's going to be enough, I guess. teeth are actually a bit wider than what I originally did. And then we have the canines here. I'm really trying to get the shapes right with just subtracting, but it's really hard. This is hard. So yeah, those are the teeth. Oh my god, they don't look good at all. If I had used Sculptris Pro here, then this part of the mouth would be like super dense and it would have been harder to um, then, I mean, easier to get the definition, but like it, it 
depending on how small you go with the with the brush size and how how um, dense you make the resolution, it can be very tricky to then um, keep sculpting because then the mesh gets too heavy, and I I didn't want that. I want to keep the same level of detail. Uh, if we want holes, there's a there's a lot of ways you can do holes. Um, you can do like masking and then polygroup, then delete the polygroup, and then um, just remesh again, and then you can keep the hole, and then you or you can like do a uh, remesh with a negative volume uh, intersected, and that helps. Like like imagine. Okay, I'm gonna show you real quick but I'm not gonna keep that. So if we go to insert, uh, where is it? Uh, where is that brush? Are they not here anymore? Insert. Did they change the brushes from the last version? I think they took some out. I'm, I'm not sure. Anyways, um, for example, you can create like a, a shadow here. I mean, a uh, mask and then use the, um, what is happening here? You paint a mask. Why is it creating a, a full poly group? So group masked, you have a new poly group like this, and then you take it out. If we put display properties double, we can see like the hole there. And then if we remesh, I'm gonna need to delete hidden, and then we remesh. Okay, now it uh, felt. I don't remember the name of the brush here. Um, it's curb bridge, yeah. I think so. No, it wasn't this one. I need to, uh, I don't remember where the brushes that I was looking for were. So my <laughs> apologies for that. But it, like, I'm looking for the insert ones. If anyone knows where they are. Because it's been a, a long time since I used those. But basically you insert them with Alt and then it creates like a negative vol uh, yeah, like a negative volume inside and then you just remesh and ZBrush interprets that as like subtract this and then you have a hole. Um, you can also just um, like with Sculptris Pro when you when you sometimes smooth you separate things. Like there's a bunch of ways to create volumes, but uh, I'm gonna keep going with this because I don't want to lose too much time. But right now I'm just focusing on the on the shapes. Like I'm just sculpting, basically, like carving. Yeah, people make make custom brushes. I have a lot of custom brushes. Some that I've made. Some that I that I've bought or, or downloaded um, for different things. And it's really cool that now the, the new version of Zebra is like, cons like just updates. You don't have to move the full folder again every time you reinstall the new version of ZBrush. Hello, all the way to Bangladesh. So for everyone who's just uh, tuned in, we started from a cube 
and we've only been subtracting. I haven't used any other brush except clay build up. I haven't used control C. I haven't used smooth. And I've only been subtracting. I haven't added any any volume at all. So it started really slow. And um, but we eventually figured out a way to to make it work. So like, yeah, doing volumes with just subtracting is kind of tricky. It's very tricky, not gonna lie. I, like, I, I really want to just add volume here, uh, but I can't. Yeah, it's a, it's a small challenge. Um, uh, the Seabrush Live people, they're trying to um, to create like this monthly uh, interesting themes, I guess. And so it's it's a nice change of of pace. Like, oh, I don't know what to sculpt today at the stream. Like, you don't have to think too much when when you have like these little challenges. And it's good practice. I can I can show you stuff. It's a bit more chilled. Is your PC supposed to beep when you were... No, I don't think so, at least. I don't think your PC should beep at all. I'm gonna try and carve more of the this part to just I mean the teeth are really bad like really really bad there's not much resolution here to work with and they look super flat so apologies for that but it, I was dreading the teeth since the beginning Doesn't look bad at all, I guess. Doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna change the matcap because this one has more contrast. So I can look better how it's going. I mean, you can tell, you, you can immediately tell that it's not, there's something off with this thing. When you see like, Um, the shapes they look kind of flat because it's it's hard to get um, interesting volumes with just not just with without like not just with with subtracting but with just one brush because I could just take like the damn standard or something like slash and and make this thing look better but I wanted to suffer today. Let me 
save again. Yeah, usually that would be what I would do. Use different subtools for the teeth, but um, the challenge here was try and and do everything from from one volume. Another tip that I can recommend is is having uh, like a small subset of of materials that you can cycle through when you're sculpting, so you can visualize volumes differently. Because every like especially matte caps, because materials are different. The materials react to to lighting, uh, but matte caps they're they have the lighting baked and the color baked and the and like the glossiness and things like that. So like this one, for example. This one is from uh, Michael Vicente. He's the orb guy, the, the guy who created the orbs cracks and, and those brushes. These matte caps are really cool. And there's, there's a glossy one and there's a matte one. So for example, that helps to just like see, oh, how are volumes reacting to light and things like that. ¿Qué onda Sergio? Saludos, gracias. Espero que todo vaya bien. So I'm gonna try and take a bit of volume off the base of the teeth. Just off the base, I want I want this volume to be on the top. Uh, yeah, it's fine. I'm using a tablet. Hey, Hajar, thank you. I hope I said your name right. Apologies if I didn't. And so usually a skull has like bones in general have like, they're, they're usually not flat and I'm trying to get as much of that detail as possible with just carving. So I have some breakup in the flow of the shapes. Um, I wouldn't say that using a, a mouse for ZBrush is bad per se, but it would be like the, like the equivalent of eating tacos with a knife and a fork, you know, uh, you could, but why would you just, just get a tablet. Just 
get a tablet and stop suf suffering. Oh my god. Almost there. Almost there. I think the cheekbones are too um, round. Flatten them a bit. Hey, greetings to Morocco. I have a friend from Morocco. When I was um, when I was working in Montreal in my team, I had a, a, a good friend of mine. He's from Morocco. He's in LA now. That's really cool. Yeah, you, you should you should upgrade as soon as you can because the the sculpting like the feeling that a tablet gets you when you're sculpting is, isn't really not the same the, as a mouse. So you really need to get used to the, 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 I mean, the tablet as soon as possible. Okay, so apparently the jaw is really thin. I hadn't realized. I need to still take a bit more volume from here. I can say, um, I don't know if you notice, if you can tell, but I'm, I'm much more comfortable right now than when I started. When I started, I was like super slow, just like, Carving really, really slow. Right now, basically, it's just detailing at this point. Like, basically, we, we had the shape. We have the shape. Um, but we have the shape because we spent so much time at the beginning visualizing. Yeah, exactly what what uh, Haruto san said. You don't need you don't need to spend a lot of money for the tablet at the beginning. I would suggest like get get the cheapest uh, Intuos or like even a, a bamboo. It's fine. I don't really know many brands, so there might be other ones. I'm not sure. Um, I'm guessing the Intuos line it's better in the terms in terms of. Uh, precision and calibration than other ones so if you can like like this one for example this is the the series into us three and i've had this one since 2009 um so i would say if you can invest in a in a good tablet because they usually would last a long time um But ditch the mouse if you can, <laughs> at least for ZBrush. For other for other programs, um, I think it's fine. 
Like for example, a lot of people use uh, mouse for, for Maya or 3ds Max or Blender. I prefer to use the same tablet. I'm just more used to um, to working with a tablet now. XP pen? Which one is that? I don't think I know that one. I know Huion or Huion, I don't know how to pronounce that. It's at, I think that's... Uh, I've seen people with that one. Yeah, I mean, any, any tablet is good. If you're just starting, any tablet is good. Yeah, it's the thing is Wacom is, is pretty expensive. Um what I'm saying is if you can go for a Wacom like right now, it's not a bad idea. It's uh they're usually worth the price. I mean I say usually cuz I I've, I've known of people that have like sometimes the cable breaks and stops working or like uh, the sensitivity of the pen but it's like it's really minimal stuff like most people have great results with Wacom and like, it's not it's not like a commercial or anything I'm not sponsored but I'm I'm just speaking from personal experience because this is what I use and it's been really good hey zero hola I'm creating a skull sculpt. Do you recommend doing the tooth? Yeah. Yeah, don't do what I'm doing right now. <laughs> this is not... This is not uh, ideal. You should always have... Just like in real life, like if, if you can see the surface of an object continue, just do one, one mesh. Um, but if it's a if, if it's a different surface, like in, like in the case of the teeth, for example, like teeth, you, you can punch someone in the face and knock them knock the teeth out. So like the teeth are not part of the same surface of the of the rest of the skull. So yeah, don't punch anyone. Whoops! What happened here? My bad. You're welcome. No worries. Yeah, cause this is this is just for the um, for the challenge. This is just for uh, for the stream. But usually you shouldn't work like this. <laughs> you should have. Different subtools, and it's also easier because you can you can have different resolutions, um, hide them. It's easier for ZBrush to work with subtools because it can offset some of the processing power by having it. Like sometimes, I don't know. You you have like different subtools, so for some reason, like ZBrush doesn't really pay attention to the ones that are not active only the ones that, that are active at the same time, so it's like... I don't know how to explain it. It's better. It's it's faster, it's lighter when you work with subtools than when you try and sculpt everything on the same, on the same mesh. It's easier for... it's better for performance. But it also depends on how many polygons you have, how many um, active points you have. 
Because if it's like low res, you can you can do it. It's fine. I'm trying to soften that part a little bit and then ¿Qué onda? Hola, hola. Um, yeah, I guess I guess this is it. Just uh, carve out a little bit more of the nose. Oh, uh, but we're pretty much done. Whoops, I said no control C. Okay, we can fix this, we can fix this, no worries. I was I was just about to, to instinctively go for the control C, but now we can fix this. Right. I really want to smooth that. I can. I'm gonna save for the final time. And. Go a bit stronger with the carving here. Because I want the teeth to pop more. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna use. Because that was a glitch. I'm gonna lower the intensity. That was too high. And just. You know, uh, something happened with the brush that it's not registering the. Sometimes happens uh, when you save. Let me save again. That sometimes the um, the intensity gets all like weird and it treats the brush as if as if it's like a hundred percent intensity. So just need to clear that. Yeah, see, it's 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 really slow. I'm gonna control that. Control C that because. Let me reset the brush. See if it helps. Like I'm barely touching and it's doing the 100% um, intensity. I don't know why Why sometimes it does that. Usually it helps if I close this, the program and open it again. But since since we're almost done with the stream, I'm just, I just figure I'm gonna leave it like that. Um, Yeah, it would be smart to, to make each tooth separate. Um, but just for the stream, I'm doing it all from 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 the same uh, mesh. Okay, so we have our our beautiful skull. Just looking for interesting views. I guess. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. It was pretty difficult to reach this level. I think the first hour was way harder than the second hour to try and get the from a cube, the main, the primary shapes first it was pretty challenging, but uh, I don't know. I feel pretty proud of myself because uh, just with a uh, with clay build up. 
it wasn't easy. Um, I, I'm, I don't know about pressure sensitivity enough to answer that. Uh, I'm guessing it's like pressure points. Any tablet, any tablet you get will be, will be better than a mouse. Any tablet, like even the cheapest one. Uh, you don't need too much, like, and also like we, our hands and our brains are so interconnected and our brains are so malleable that you can, you can get used to the pressure after a couple of days, like just get a tablet and start trying it out. And yeah, it's, it's really not, uh, you shouldn't overthink that too much. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so thank you again, everyone, for uh, tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the stream. I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle in the first half. And um, follow me if you want to see my work, if you want to uh, get in touch with me. Um, and I'll be streaming again on the channel in two weeks. I don't know if you guys have any other comments or questions before I, before I leave. Yeah, what Catgirl said, you can disable that. Uh, no, a tablet, well, yeah, it, it replaces the mouse. Like, for example, I'm, I'm, I have the mouse right next to my tablet. So I'm, I'm moving the mouse right now. Here's my pen. I'm moving the mouse so I can, I can navigate, I can rotate, I can click menus. But imagine that when you're sculpting, what's going to be easier for you? Like, if I ask you to, to draw something, use a pencil or use a mouse and draw with a mouse. So it's the same thing. You have much more precision, much more precision if you use like a, a pen. And on top of that, if you sculpt with a mouse, it's gonna treat the brush as like if it has 100% um, intensity because with a mouse, you only have, it's like a binary. You, know, you have like click or no click. So it's like a hundred or zero. And with the pen, the pen has like springs inside and it detects the, the the tape without even touching the tag. It has a lot of more, more features and it's way more responsive to pressure. So yeah, if you really want to be able to have control of your sculpts and your brushes and whatever it is you're doing, just get a tablet, get a cheap one, like start with a cheap one. Don't, don't really overthink that. Uh, what I was doing, I was, I was sculpting in a subtractive manner, I started from a cube and what the, like imagine how the old masters would do it, like just carve out the volume instead of adding in things. Because like, if you have a, a block of stone or marble, you cannot, you cannot really add things to it. You cannot, you can only carve. So that's what I tried to do right now. Also without smoothing, I didn't smooth and I didn't use control C. I only used clay build up and uh, subtracting. Yeah. Yeah, Awakem, uh, because I, you, you cannot use ZBrush on an iPad uh, as of right now. Maybe in the future, there's a bunch of apps for sculpting, but uh, like ZBrush specifically, no, you cannot, you cannot use it on an iPad. So yeah, it's uh, get, a, get one of these, like a uh, drawing tablet. Anyways. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Have a great rest of your week. Um, hit me up on my socials if you have any comments or questions or if you just want to chat and follow me if you want and see you in two weeks for anyone that wants to see the stream again. And yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, everyone.